This is Create Duplicator Sequence, a plugin that I created to help speed up a common workflow. So what I have here is a dynamic animated element. And by that, what I mean is that I have this animation that animates on, but I also have a color array that is connected to the color of this rectangle. And I also have a string array that is connected to the text on here. So this is what I would consider the base graphical element. I have everything animated exactly how I want it to be. And now I just want to create some more duplicates of it so that all of these extra pieces can be seen. Without the plugin, it would take somewhere between 10 and 12 steps to generate duplicators and connect everything together, get the animation offset done correctly, which is why I have created the plugin duplicator sequence. So you can see here, we have some settings. We have horizontal, text, reverse, object spacing, duplicator count, animation offset, and then create duplicator sequence. For this design, I want to use the base setup of duplicator sequence because I found it to be the most common. So what I want to do is I want to select all of the relevant layers. So that's everything except for this background shape. And then for this design, I'm going to leave horizontal unchecked, text unchecked, and reverse unchecked as well. The object spacing input lets you pick how much space goes between each duplicate. The duplicator count is how many duplicates you want. And the animation offset is how much offset you want in between each element running their animation. So for this particular piece, I want the object spacing set to 75, the duplicator count at three, which is the number of things in my array that I have, and the animation offset to be 25 frames. You can see here, this full animation takes you know, around 35, 40 frames, something like that. But I do want there to be an overlap in the animation. One thing to note is that the object spacing is based on the height or width of your element. And so here, because it's at a diagonal, this height is actually taller than it is here. So as you're picking your spacing, make sure that you are on the frame that you want it to reference the height of. So now we make sure that everything is selected and hit create duplicator sequence. So now you can see we have three duplicates running through their animation with an offset and each duplicate is slightly different because the arrays are connected in. Now, if we find that the animation overlap isn't correct or we want to change another setting, we can now just go back through the layers. So for this instance, we can open up the duplication sequence stagger and change this from minus 25 to let's say minus 10. And now we see that the animation overlaps much better. Duplicator sequence is also great for quickly creating things like bar charts. Here, we have another animation element where it's a single bar and it is animating up to a height that is determined by a value array. And it also has a color array connected into it as well. So for something like this, what we would do is we would select our base bar graph, make sure to click horizontal because for this bar chart, we're doing horizontal and everything else is essentially the same. So for here, the spacing, I want it tighter. So I'm going to put five duplicator count. Let's put six animation offset. We can just do, let's say five. It'll come on pretty quick. Click the button. And now you can see that we have our animated bar chart. If we have something that we don't want to animate either left to right or top to bottom, we can always hit reverse. So for this instance, once again, we hit duplicator sequence, and now these bars are reversed. Duplicator sequence also works great for text, but because of how Calvary treats text and spacing, there are a couple of extra things that need to be added to make sure that everything is spaced properly. So if you are working with only text, make sure that text is selected. So for this one, I'm going to have the object spacing be 50, duplicator count will be five, and the animation offset will be 25. Make sure that our text is selected and hit create duplicator sequence. And here we see the text animating in one after the other. And as a bonus, there's actually a second part to this plugin. So up here, if you go to the MoGraph elements tab, I've created a bunch of preset animation elements. So up here, as you can see, these elements can either be outlined or without outlines. And then each of these buttons will generate a base element on its own. So for this one, let's do outlines on, click on this one. This is what I call a number pop, basically a circle with a number in it that pops to life. Underneath the number pop, you'll see that there is the text. So here we can add a couple of numbers. There's also a color array for the outlines and a color array for the inner circle color. 
And all these elements have been designed to work with duplicator sequence. So here, let's create a horizontal list of numbers. There are three of them. Object spacing can stay at 50. Animation offset, let's do 12. Make sure that our number pop is selected. Hit create duplicator sequence. And here we've very quickly generated a numbered list. And as we can see, the colors for the second one aren't that great, but all we need to do is just go into our arrays and change it. And here we can see all of the MoGraph element presets that I have created. This has been a quick overview of how to use Create Duplicator Sequence. I can't wait to see what you make.